Here comes Turbo Flood. Well, good evening and welcome to the Arbor Hills Nature Preserve in Plano, Texas. Tonight's exercise is the first in a series of field tests of the Night Corps EDC 37 flashlight. I do want to thank Night Corps for sending me a pre-release, and I do mean pre-release. Yes, it arrived in this box. I have not even seen production packaging. It did arrive, however, with all the uh, usual suspects, including the uh, probably the best lanyards in the business. So I've been very fortunate to collect several of these, and I have one attached to the strap of each ruck in every one of my search and rescue loadouts. But enough of that, let's get back to the light. I suspect a number of viewers are Night Corps users, probably owners of one of the prior EDC products. So let's start with a comparison here versus the 29. At first glance, it looks lengthwise similar to the 23, probably just a little bit wider. There we go. Looking at the back, very generous one-way clip. I've been carrying this just clip to the strap of my ruck works. Great. From an ergonomic standpoint, you'll notice that since overhand is the most common grip, to use the OLED screen, there's a bit of rotation required here. Very generous screen space, and with an overhand grip, I barely have to rotate my hand or move it out slightly. Very easy to read while keeping the light approximately oriented downrange. Also, with this grip, it's very easy to just move my thumb up and down to adjust the lock status. Another thing you'll notice, let's get to the side here. Really like these glass breaking beads, and these can be replaced with screws if you like. The controls are the same as you're used to. I think they're uh, a little bit more generous on the 37. Overall, I like the ergonomic improvements. You still have the same set of basic outputs. Ultra low, low, medium, high, then the half and full press and hold for turbo spot and turbo flood. As before, those modes are intended for short burst, very short durations, and primarily for defensive use. If you prefer strobe, it is possible to reprogram this to, for lack of a better phrase, substitute turbo flood for strobe. Now the output is substantially higher. You've already seen the lumen number. The interval that you get, of course, is environmentally dependent. You're going to get a longer interval if you just pick the slide up after it's been sitting in an air-conditioned room for two days and then hit turbo flood than you would if you'd been out in the field using it for an hour and in fact had already done several uh, turbo spot intervals in advance of going to turbo flood. Then of course there is the recovery time. We're going to go over all of that. I'm also going to go over a very brief UI demo after this introduction for the benefit of those who do not have prior experience with this type of product. If you're not interested in that, no problem. 
skip the chapter and go directly to beam shots and in fact on the subject of beam shots I know that's why you're really here you want to see how this light performs out in the field well we've reached that happy point where it's time for me to shut up and it's time to take the light out in the field and let it speak for itself I don't want anyone to get flashed so I'm doing this demo segment on a different night and at a different time I want to show you some things about the OLED display for turbo turbo spot is a half press and hold of this button turbo flood is a full press and hold so anytime you go into one of these turbo modes you get what I call a burn down bar which is the they say it's the amount of power it's really the amount of time remaining that you can maintain that turbo output and when it's exhausted you saw that there's a step down I let off and then you're going to get essentially a refresh indicator now this is again not power related everything is temperature related which of course depends on how long you've been using the light the environment and so forth turbo flood is going to generate more heat than turbo spot so it may have a shorter burn interval and a greater recovery again these things are all going to be temperature and thus environment dependent so just wanted to show that to you so that you are aware of it now let's do another complete burst okay if I stop right here I still have remaining burn so I can go again and again until it's completely exhausted then it steps down now this is essentially a regeneration if you will so you can see that these turbo outputs are intended for very short duration over occasional intervals for uh, quick identification in the case of the spot and night core intends the turbo flood or what they call lumen shield to be used primarily for a very short-term defensive application so i'll be straight up with you if you think you're going to turn this on in turbo flood and maintain 8000 lumen output for minutes at a time this is not the droid you're looking for This chapter is going to cover some UI concepts, not everything, enough to get you out in the field and get you going. If you are already familiar with these concepts, or perhaps you just don't care, no problem. Go ahead and skip ahead to the chapter on output levels. First thing we're going to look at is momentary to ultra low, which you can get from on or off. We're off now, this switch, half press and hold ultra low release full press and release to turn on in the last memorized output level of either ultra low low mid or high half press and hold for ultra low release to get back to low full press and release to turn off from off successive half presses run through the cycle from ultra low to high once you've got the output level you want simply full press and release to select that output level in the previous example the oled display was on here it's off i've been running in 
ultra low for a while. Now I just got through saying it's a half press and release to go to the next output level. But if this indicator is off, that first half press is going to turn the indicator on. It takes another half press while the indicator is on to go up to that next level. Another way to think about this is if you've been operating for a while and you want to quickly move to the next output level in the cycle, you could just think of it as a quick double click. That's one way to look at it. From on, simply half press and release to cycle through the various output levels. Once you've decided what you want, just release and you are in that output. So it's the half press and release to run through the cycle. One quick note about memory. Hey, okay, I'm in low right now. Let's say I go up a couple of half presses. Now I'm in high and I let the indicator turn off. Turn off, back on, we're in high. Coming up to the bridge where I normally do output level test in ultra low. Actually for relatively close quarters observation, I'm totally digging this. up into low. Look out over into the creek area. Medium. And there is high. I'm not sure we're getting the old 40 yards line of sight maybe 35 to 38, and field of view. Turbo spot, starting with the EDC-29 in its low output level. There's the spot, tree 175 yards in the distance. I can barely, barely make that out, step down and let off. EDC 37, low output level, turbo spot. Now I can barely make out that tree at 175 yards. I could do very basic detection. Uh, we have some particulates in the air. If I didn't have that, I could do uh, even better. Step down, let off. EDC 29 on its medium output level. Let's go into turbo flood. Line of sight probably 50 to 55 with uh, all the trees in bloom. Right now there's the step down and let off. EDC 37 in its medium output level and here comes Turbo Flood. The field of view is pretty incredible. I'm on a tripod, so I can't quite show it to you. There's the step down and let off. Once again, through the basic output level, starting at ultra low, up to low, medium, high, tough to get that 55 yard line of sight with uh, everything that's in bloom, but let's move over here, look up in the trees, I see uh, bobcats up in the trees every now and then, move over into this area. 
I still like that mix of downrange and peripheral. Excellent field of view. Let's go quickly into turbo spot, turbo flood, let back off. And final test of the evening, thermal analysis of turbo flood. I'm going to go from off to turbo, step down, and then back to off. The light you see right now is from my headlamp. And here we go. Step down, back to off. We had a pretty good interval there because the uh, light has not been used at all today. It's been sitting in my office in the uh, air conditioning. Now we have to wait for the light to cool off to a sufficient degree before it can be used again while we observe the temperature let me get this adjusted just slightly all right in terms of wrap-up I don't really think anything needs to be said a light that's good enough should be able to pretty much sell itself I hope you saw through testing tonight everything you needed to get a good idea as to what the light is all about. If there's something else you'd like to see, additional tests, let me know. Uh, we'll see what we can do. The power remaining indicator, I don't know if you can see there, is at about three quarters. Remember, that's really not power or battery related. It is temperature related. We could, of course, go do another burst now. What we would not be able to do it as long as before. So I hope you've got a good idea as to how that works as well. As you can see, it's still very hot, but concentrated around the head area of the light. A slight shift of your grip will keep that from uh, bothering you. On that happy note, I guess I'm going to go ahead and shut it down. You can see that the uh, cooling in this area is going to take a pretty substantial amount of time. So that's it for tonight. Hope you enjoyed the test. And as always, until the next review, thank you very much for your time and thank you for watching the video.